itself a legend, a showbiz pro with an old-time carny man's flair for bringing them into the tent. Colonel Tom Parker saw Elvis Presley for what he could be, and as his personal manager, launched him on the royal road to stardom. To mark the Elvis Presley anniversary, Colonel Parker is playing host in the Elvis Suite, the rooms where Presley stayed when he was playing the Las Vegas Hilton, then the International Hotel. The suite has been filled with Presley memorabilia for just this week. At age 78, Colonel Parker generally declines interviews, but he agreed to talk to us earlier today from Las Vegas. It is generally conceded, uh, Colonel Parker, and to those who don't know it, let's tell them right now that Elvis's success was part Elvis, part Colonel Parker. Which part was yours? Because that was the less vis visible part. I think mine was the least part. But explain it to me. What was it? What well, did you do uh, for him to, to, to help bring him to the public's attention? I, I did all the promotion, the outdoor advertising, and he did the show on the stage. And the fans made it possible. You can promote all you want to, but if the people don't want to buy a ticket, it doesn't help. So I did my part, Elvis did his show, and we were lucky. Great talent, and we had a great show and a lot of fun. Now, let me ask you something. In this day and age, in the 1980s, it would be unthinkable that a star of Elvis Presley's magnitude would not end up on the Johnny Carson show, on the Merv Griffin show, on half the talk shows around the country. You deliberately kept him back a little bit from that kind of exposure. Why did you do that? Well, I like to correct you. I kept him back, but I didn't do it deliberately. I found out some of my friends, they had artists. They put them on all the shows, talk shows for free and they had a hard time getting a job after that. So you thought it was just a bad, that, that, that it was bad promotion, even though it got someone very well known, that it ultimately didn't work out for the best? Well, I, I felt it was good for us not to go on, although all these fellas were good friends of mine. But when you go on these shows, most of the time they book people when they're big stars, so they don't hurt them too much. But we were starting out, and it, it, it wouldn't have helped us any which has proven because we did all right without him. Yeah, you did terrific without him. Uh, it is, you've got critics, you know that. You have them, even, even oh. Elvis has critics. Your critics say that you held him back, that he could have been much more of an actor, for yeah. example, than he ultimately, you know, was given a chance to be. Well, because you put him in those kind of, uh, you know, uh, beach bikini, jailhouse rock type yeah. movies. Right. Well. If whoever said that, that's fine. They can say what they want to. If I was them, if they know so much, they ought to go into management business. Well, you tell me about it. I mean, was he perfectly content? I mean, he was it a matter of his knowing his own level, knowing his own limitations, or was it just Well, that... I, I didn't know what he knew all of it, but he knew that he could do whatever he wanted to, and nobody told Elvis Presley what to do, because he was a very strong person, and we had a great relationship. But I took care of mine, he took care of his, and he didn't let anybody tell him what to do. Could he have been a really great actor? Could he have become a fine dramatic actor, do you think? Did he have that kind of well, ability? You, you know, Ted, you're right, but you know, one time at one studio, we had a great producer, the late Jerry Walt, you remember him? Sure do. And he came to us with a script. And he told Elvis that if we did this picture, he would be practically assured of an Academy Award, but they could not pay us the money that we wanted because the script was so expensive. So I told him that we usually stay home during the Academy Award, and he pays us our money, and if he bought us the Oscar, I'd give him his money back, and I never saw him again. Okay, now what about the, what about the songs? I am told that he could sit there and listen to a stack of demos and two, three, four, five, seven would go by and then he'd say, that's the one, I want that one. And that he had kind of an unerring instinct for what was good and right for him, musically. Yeah, Ted, as long as I was with Elvis Presley, I never was involved with what songs he was gonna record. Very seldom I was ever in the studio. He picked his own songs with the uh, songwriters, whatever they were. And I was never, he never asked me, should I do this or that? It was up to him, he liked it that way. The only song that I was able to have him record, because I thought it was good for him, was Are You Lonesome Tonight? That's the only one. 
step back for a moment and do what I know so many people who are watching tonight would like you to do, and that is explain, if you can, the Elvis phenomenon. Not just while he was alive, but here we are 10 years after his death, and if anything, he's a bigger star than he ever was. Well, I don't think I can explain it, Ted. I've been, it's been 10 years since Elvis passed away. The, when he passed away, I was on tour. I had to stay behind, close out all the tours. But I've been for 10 years doing nothing except consulting work and working on keeping Elvis's name in the limelight with the fans because they're devoted. I've, I've talked to over a thousand in the last four days here. I did uh, interviews and uh, it's, it's unexplainable. They say anybody else could have done it, perhaps so. But I was happened to be the one that was with him. He did his part, I did mine, and uh, there is no answer for that. When all is said and done now, was he happy with his career? Was he satisfied with his career, or was there, was there any emptiness left? Well, I don't know, but I know one thing. When I told us to slow down, he said, I want to play more dates, so I booked more dates. I said, well, I don't think you should. And he said, well, that's what I want to do. And I quit for a while, and he was very unhappy, so we started all over again. Colonel Parker, thanks very much. Thank you. We'll have a little more from Colonel Parker later in this program, but when we come back, we'll be joined by Jack Souden, the man who turned Elvis Presley's mansion, Graceland, into a museum and shrine, who had his own thoughts today about Elvis and what he himself might have made of all the noise, the hoopla, and also the genuine love that he still seems to generate. Uh, I think it's wonderful, the following, the people supporting him, and uh, what else can you say? I've never heard of anything like this, but uh, I'm very happy with it, and I know if I was, it's anyway looking down, I think he's laughing pretty good with what's going on.